Over the last several Nux versions, server components have improved a lot, and the two most recent changes bring us a lot closer to being able to ship large chunks of our app as server components. But first, for the uninitiated, what are server components, and how have they changed in the years since my last video on them? To understand it, let's agree on some vocab. There's three places where your view app can render. Universally, which means it can render on the server or the client, so during SSR it will render, it will hydrate in your app, and then if we do client-side navigation, that view code will run on the client. We can render on the client only with client only, and then we can render components on the server only using server components, which can also be called Nuxt Islands. But what does it mean to only render on the server? It means that this component code is only on the server, so it's never sent to the client and it's never hydrated. And this is a good way to send less JavaScript to the browser. Let's say we have a component that uses a heavy dependency to generate HTML from a markdown string. This component isn't interactive, but this whole dependency will be sent to the client so that everything can be hydrated properly. But now let's make this a server component just by adding .server in the file name. Now, our client app doesn't need any of this component code or its dependencies. That's why we can look at it as a little island inside of our view app. And if this component ever needs to render again, like its props change, or we're doing client-side navigation to a page with a server component, a request will get sent to our server, our component code will run there, and then the response will get sent back. Since it only runs on the server, we can also securely run code. Anything in a Nux API route can also run securely in a server component, whether it's database access, accessing private keys, or using any runtime config secret. Since it's never sent to the client, we can run it inside a server component. So serving components can be a great way to eliminate a lot of unnecessary work being done on the client. But what's changed recently that has me more excited than ever, but also curious how the community is going to react to these new models and ways of thinking. The coolest one for me is the Nux client directive, which allows us to take server components and partially hydrate the bits that we want interactive. So now let's create a normal dot view component using everyone's favorite example, account ref and a button. If we add this to our server component and run it, nothing will happen when we click. And that's because all the children of a server component by default send no JavaScript to the browser. So it's never hydrated and it's never interactive. But this component does have client side interaction. So if we say Nux client, when we click it in our browser, now it's actually working. And if we look at our request for the server component, it's actually doing something really cool. Not only does our server component render, but if we look at this component's property, not only do we get the initial HTML, but we also get the JavaScript chunk that our client app can use to hydrate this component. And that's just one way to add interactivity. Another way is using slots. So from a normal .view component, we call a server component and pass it a slot. Since this section is coming from a normal view component, it will be interactive by default. And one of the other big new features is the ability to create server-only pages. Similar to components, you can create it in your pages folder by using .server.view. Now everything here will be rendered on the server unless we add Nux client. And this allows us to have that same client-side navigation from our view app, but have entire pages of server-rendered HTML. With some cool prefetching with Nux link, this can make switching between pages so much faster. So while they're still experimental, server components are really coming along. So should you be using them in your apps right now? My take currently is that if you have single components that are shipping a lot of code to the browser that doesn't need to be shipped to the browser, like our markdown example earlier, I'd feel pretty confident shipping that as a server component. That use case has been around for about a year and it's gotten pretty nice to work with. But when it comes to more advanced component composition, like slots, that's where you can really feel that it's still experimental. So unless you're down to be on the bleeding edge of Nuxt and helping the team find some bugs, more complex use cases that deeply use Nuxt client server components or server pages are probably a little bit away. For me, one of the most interesting problems with Nuxt server components is the education that has to surround it. I know more detailed docs is on the team's roadmap, but I'm curious how they're going to recommend these. Is it going to be the default recommendation for making pages? pages and components, or more of a pick your spot kind of thing for performance critical areas. And then once more people play with it, what new patterns will come up using scope slots or some advanced component techniques? I'm interested in what happens in larger projects when someone has universally rendered pages and server only pages. Because essentially in a universally rendered, everything's interactive until you go to a server component. But in the server only, everything is static until you add Nux client. Tracking these boundaries between client and server, server and client, add some mental overhead. And even when playing around for this video, I was messing it up a little bit. So I wonder what either I can do on my end from making videos or the Nux team can do from docs and DX to make it a little bit harder to make mistakes. Or is it just a skill issue? Either way, I'm really excited about the future of server components. So if you haven't tried them, go play around with it. Let me know your feedback in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.